which you don't see this generation. Why? We have lost the fear of the, of the Lord. Because there are two things. We have mercy and we have the severity of God. Paul talked about it. He says, yes, we have the mercy of God. The mercy and the grace is so great. Whatever you've done, God will forgive you. Not only forgive you, he will actually make you his son. You are also now a God, which is huge grace. But he talks about the severity of God. All Adam did was don't eat this fruit. Can you imagine God telling you, tomorrow don't eat? And you were hungry and you ate. And God says, because of you, the whole mankind is doomed to go to hell. So there's the severity of God. That when you think about it, you think, but Adam just ate the fruit, Father. So because of that, the whole of mankind is doomed. When God speaks, you must realize this is God. There must come a holy fear of God. That's why sometimes God does not show things to us. Because the, the more you know, the more he expects from you. To whom who is giving much, much is expected. When Moses, God told Moses, speak to the rock. Moses hit the rock. God told Moses, you are not going to the promised land. Meanwhile, Moses is the one who had been interceding and had carried all the people of Israel of all the sins. He did that simple thing. God said, you will not enter because you know more. That's why you need to have the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord brings a certain obedience, a certain reverence. So that now when God tells you something, you know, hey, this is serious. I will do it despite what everybody thinks. And maybe that's what we'll be talking about on Thursday. Being a people pleaser or a God pleaser. Because peer pressure is so strong that it takes the fear of the Lord to actually translate you. So when God says something, you don't care what everybody else thinks. They can all laugh at you. They can all mock you. You still do what God says. But in this comes a certain reverential fear. When you look at the Old Testament, when the high priest was going to the Holy of Holies, he had bells on him. And they put a rope around him. In case if he went there, he made the wrong step. God says, do it in this order. If he misses one order, bam, he dies instantly. The bell stops ringing and they pull him out. That is how deep the reverential fear of God is. Remember David? When David could have killed Saul, instead of killing Saul, he just cut off a piece of Saul's cloth. And even that, he said, oh God, what have I done? I've actually touched God's anointing. There was a reverence for the things of God. I know a lot of ministers use this, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. But the anointed ones are you. Every child of God, when God was talking, saying that scripture, he was talking about Israel. Every child of God is anointed. So you must be careful what you say about the Christian. Because that's anointed one. If David is saying, hey, I cannot touch God's anointed one. Whenever a Christian does something, just go and pray for them. Don't go in secret and start talking about them. Don't look down on them. Because these are the anointed ones. And if you cannot show that fear, that reverence to God, God cannot reveal mighty things to you. Remember Joseph as well, when the woman wanted to sleep with him, in secret, God has this, uh, it seemed as if God had deserted him, they have sold you off, so well, God has deserted me, I can do whatever I want to do. He says, can I do this thing against God? He still had that reverential fear for the Most High God. And you see how God translated him into the place um, of high position. And even Moses, when his sister and Aaron spoke against Moses, God put leprosy on the sister. Moses said, but this is my sister. God said, no, 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 no. She spoke against you. Was she not afraid to speak against somebody I have anointed? And so there needs to come a certain reverential fear of Almighty God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. You see about the Lord Jesus as well. So Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, he's talking about Jesus. He says, in, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up definite special petitions for that he which not only wanted, but needed. Okay, let's look at the New King James Version. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of what? His godly fear. This is the word of God. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So when Jesus was in a tight place praying, 
God heard him because of his godly fear. So you need to have a certain reverence because you need to appreciate that the person who lives in you is almighty God. Don't take it lightly that this treasure we carry in earthly vessels, the person who lives in you is almighty God. In the Old Testament, when the Ark of the Covenant arrived to the battleground, all the Israelites would scream for joy because they knew victory was done because the Holy Ghost has appeared. And we know from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. And when you go and read that chapter, it tells you things to do, things not to do. And you notice some of the things not to do are not major, major sins we think about. It's things like malice, gossip, backbiting. Some of the little things you think, but God, everybody does it. God says, no, 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 no. Those things will grieve, will grieve the Holy Spirit. So we have to have that reverential fear. So somebody just magnify the Holy Ghost. Just adore him. Really. I made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord, forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you are unable to. for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for sending your Spirit to us. We adore you, Holy Ghost. We appreciate you, Holy Ghost. We appreciate you, Holy Ghost. We adore you, Holy Ghost. And we welcome you, my Lord. Bless you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. 
arguably the two greatest minds in, in all history, Isaac Newton and Einstein. Isaac Newton was a Christian. Einstein was not a Christian. But Einstein believed in God. He says when he goes and looks at all creation, see the order of everything, the magnitude of everything, the exactness of everything, he says it is impossible. It came from nothing. He said there must exist a God. But because he wasn't born again, his mind could not grasp it. He says there is no way this God who made all these things, we can actually relate to him. He says it is impossible. It's like a human being, the top scientist relating to an ant. There is no comparison. That's because he did not have revelation knowledge. With revelation knowledge, we reveal that we can actually, actually become the sons of God. So now we can relate to God on his level, the same level of God. What he sees, he shows us to see. What he does, he shows us to do. So we can actually manifest every single thing that he does. So finally, we cannot go without the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Because remember, answers to prayers is in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. Healing is in the name of Jesus. So Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, when Jesus was sending them out, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So the name of Jesus is the name of the Father. The name of Jesus is the name of the Son. The name of Jesus is also the name of the Holy Spirit. So when you speak the name of Jesus, you're actually calling your Father's name, the Holy Spirit's name. So the name of Jesus needs to be constantly on your mouth. You know, when you read in the Acts of the Apostle, there was one Christian, Ananias. Christian, born again. I'm sure he was filled with the Spirit, but he was still sick on his bed. Until Peter came up. And Peter understood the name of the Holy Spirit. He knew his name was Jesus. And Peter said to Ananias, Jesus Christ makes you whole. Get up from your bed immediately. The Holy Spirit responded. Because the Holy Spirit needs the name of Jesus to function. Without the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not flow. Because all authority, all power, all dominion, all rank is in the name of Jesus. So without that, no, no matter the amount of power the Holy Spirit has, all the authorities in the name of Jesus. So we need to use the name of Jesus. Then the Holy Spirit moves. So throughout the Acts of Apostles, the name of Jesus is so prominent. I dare you to go back to your Bibles, underline or highlight every time you see the word name of Jesus. You see, it fills throughout all the Acts of Apostles. Silver and gold have I now, but what I have, I give to you. What? In the name of Jesus. Then the Holy Ghost moved. There was this young girl harassing Paul. Young, well, it wasn't a young girl. It was the demon in the young girl harassing Paul for days. Paul, mighty Paul, filled the spirit and everything. The demon was not scared of him. The demon still harassed him. It was when he turned around and said, in the name of Jesus, then the demon moved. So you need to be using the name of Jesus all the time for the Holy Ghost to actually move. Because the power is released when we actually speak in the name of Jesus. And God has given us the Holy Spirit to empower us. So everything that we do in word or in deed, we do it in the name of Jesus. For the Holy Spirit has come here to empower you, to reveal the name of Jesus to you, to be with you everywhere you go so you can actually walk in reality. And reality is whenever I use the name of Jesus, it works. So he comes to empower your soul, empower your spirit to walk in the name of Jesus. But somebody magnify the name of Jesus because we cannot live here without the name of Jesus. Everything we do in business, in career, in relationships, in wealth, in speaking, in doing anything, we do it in the name of Jesus.
just magnify the name of Jesus. Just give thanks to the name of Jesus. Just adore the Father for giving us the name of Jesus, for baptizing us in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost, for immersing us into the authority of the Lord Jesus, into the rank, the highest rank of the Lord Jesus, into the power of the Holy Ghost, into the dominion of the Most High God, that we have power, we have dominion over all beings in heaven, all things in heaven, over all beings on earth, everything on earth. We have authority, power, dominion over all things under the earth, over all demons, over all devils, over all the earth's resources, over all the world system. No man, nothing can stand before you in the name of Jesus. So magnify the Most High God for the name of Jesus. For that name is yours. God has given you the power of attending to use that name in every area of your life. Just give him the thanks. Worship him. Magnify him. For the name of Jesus. We bless you, Father. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Thank you for, we know even as we've ministered to you, Holy Ghost, that you've imparted gifts to us. You give us a deeper appreciation of yourself. You've released us into new dimensions, new dimensions spiritually, new dimensions in our soul, new dimensions in our body, healing us, Lord my God. Thank you for a renewed walk, a renewed baptism, my God. Thank you for your power flowing through us in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much, Holy Ghost, for empowering us to do everything in word or in deed in the name of Jesus. We magnify your rules. We do not take this lightly, Lord. Thank you for teaching us, showing us the fear of the Lord, my Lord. Thank you for moving us and guiding us to walk in the fear of the Lord. Thank you so much for your fear, my Lord. We magnify you. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. You know, as we continue doing these things, these services, teaching and worshiping, there will be strong moves of the Spirit in ourselves because we create the atmosphere for Him to continue doing it wherever we are. For it's the Holy Ghost who carries the aura of God. He actually carries the whole Godhead. And as we continue doing this, we continue to minister and to move powerfully in us. We thank you. Amen. We're saying still praying if you've never given your lives to Christ. We talked also online. We talked about the severity of God and the mercy and the grace of God. The mercy and the grace of God is whatever you've done, He forgives you. Not only does He forgive you, He actually translates you to become His son now. You now have the divine nature of God to work with the Holy Spirit. He says, if you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins, and that God raised him up from the dead. And you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord. You'll be forgiven all your sins. You become a son of God. And you miss, you escape the severity of the almighty God. It's not a thing to be taken lightly. For Jesus came, stripped himself of his Godhead, just to come and suffer, to die for you. And so today he's knocking at the door of your heart. Will you let me in? So let him in today. If you've never given your life to Christ and you want to give your life to Jesus, you also on the media screen, just say this after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. I believe that you died for me and that you were raised up on the third day for my justification. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Savior. Thank you for translating me into the kingdom of God. Amen. If you've never said this prayer before, if you just said it, if you are here, you can raise up your hands. If you are online, the details will come up, or you can contact us, and we'll send you details about this new life that you're coming to. If you can come to us, we are in Kilburn, Clayton Crown. You can come and visit us. If you're too far away, find a church that teaches the word of God. Teach us the name of Jesus. Teach us about the Holy Spirit and join that church. And welcome. One soul born again, the whole of heaven rejoices. So as you're born again now, the whole of heaven is rejoicing. 
Like they say, God has gone up with a shout. So we magnify it, Father. So let's clap for the Most High God, because I'm sure somebody gets born again. Let's go up with a shout. Let's magnify the Most High God. Magnify the Holy Ghost for giving the conviction of sin to turn unto righteousness. Let's bless the Most High God. We're going to minister healing. If you're sick in any part of your body, just put your hands there. You online as well. We're going to minister healing in the name of Jesus. For by his stripes you were healed. So he has bought it for you. And now with his name we enforce that healing. It has already been done for you. But with his name we enforce that healing. So I speak to your bodies now. In the name of Jesus Christ be made whole. Any sickness, any disease in your body. I command you now. Leave your bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of the most high God. Heal their bodies, quicken their bodies in the name of Jesus. A new spirit of infirmities holding on to their bodies. I command you to let go of their bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for the name of Jesus. You're healed. They say out, I'm healed. I'm healed. For faith in the name of Jesus Christ heals. So we magnify you, Father. Thank you so much, my Lord. Just thank the Holy Spirit for his move. Thank you for what he's done in your life. Faith takes it by thanking. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. But tell somebody, clap for yourself because you spent the week praying. Clap for yourself because we used, we used the corporate anointing. The corporate anointing is the most powerful anointing. But let's continue. Don't stop. Continue. So that our services, he moves more and more in our services. Amen. So we're going to sing our closing, is it closing song? We rise up for our closing song. And just remind those at home, you can still come. It's a very safe place. I've got my mask. So I'm going to sit down and wear my mask. Everybody's wearing their masks. 